Josh Green here for Tungsten Towers. We've got Ted Hankey at the British Open and British Classic weekend in Bridlington. Ted, you've been playing some good darts behind the uh, behind the stage, but maybe not quite what you wanted up on the stage there. No, just you know, I, I've been out for a while and uh, the stage game's not good, but I, I, I've enjoyed it again. It's nice to be back. You know, I play well on the floor, but I didn't play well on the stage. Everybody sees that, but it's about working and getting it right. You know. And how important do you think it is to be enjoying darts once again? Because that's the main aim. I, I say to everybody, no matter where you go, exhibitions, you know, tournaments, if you want to play this game, you've got to enjoy it. If you don't enjoy it, then don't do it. It's an amazing game. It's a fantastic game. Some great, great dart players in the game, whether it be BDO or BBC. You know, it, it, it's just the excitement of this sport is why I played it from, a year, from when I was nine years old. You know, it's brilliant, absolutely brilliant. And obviously you've just got back into the, the swing of things really. What's your short term goals for the next four, six months? Well, to, to be honest with you, I mean the season's coming to a close here now, the BDO season, and um, I've got to look now for the next 12 months and I would like, really like to be in the top 16 to start qualifying for the major events of the, of the BDO. You know, the likes of the World Trophy, the World Championships, the World Masters. But obviously it's going to be hard because I've been away and everybody else has advanced, but we've got a lot of good new young players coming as well. Yeah. So you've got to get used to them as well. So, listen, I've got ability, you don't lose what I've got. It's just a, a case of finding it and bringing it back. Mm. I was going to say, obviously, what, eight months ago now, obviously, Glenn Durant and uh, Mark McGinney left. Yeah. There's a little bit of a hole to fill, but I feel like the likes of yourself coming back and Jim Williams obviously stepping up yeah, and playing well. Yeah. You know, you, you look at Glenn, I mean, I've known Glenn a long, long time. A lovely, lovely fellow, as everybody knows. Amazing dart player. He's achieved something that, I don't know, I don't even know if Eric achieved what he achieved with at Lakeside, I'm not too sure. But, you know, you can't knock the man's ability. Mark, an amazing dart player. Did what he did, went and got his tour card. These guys, you have to give them a chance. If they want to, you've got to let them do it. There shouldn't be any... Um, fines or, or, or restrictions from doing it, you know what I mean? Dark players are dark players and I think you should be allowed to play where you want to, you know? And the world of darts for me, from when I came back in 96, 97, with the likes of Kevin Painter, uh, Colin Monk, Steve Beat and all that, who most of them are still playing the PDC now, they've gone to what they want to do and I stayed here and that was it. But darts is a beautiful game and nobody should be stopped doing what they should do, what they want to do, to be honest. And just touching on the World Trophy, you were so close to making it. Well, you know, I, I, I really had a good day there, you know. I played some great players, I got to the final, and John Scott beat me 5-3. But that was my, and nothing against John, because I know John's a good lad, that was my worst game of the day, and I didn't perform. Well, fair play to John, he did what he had to do when he got in. That was his chance, and he did what he did. And just moving on, and talk a little bit about Lakeside, because it's played a big part in your career. And is it a little bit sad to see it go for the World Championship? Listen, it's, it's, it's always going to be sad because, you know, I mean, Lakeside was something, I don't know, 30, 35 years. And I spent every World Championship I've basically played has been at Lakeside. I love Bob Potter. I love everything about the place. But the BDO decided to make a change. You can't knock them for doing that. They think, OK, you know, we've had a great time there. We feel we need to go forward and make something different. I really hope it works for them. They go into the Indigo and the O2, which I know very well because I've done exhibitions there. Fantastic venue, nice people. Really hope it works for them, I really do. But I do feel sad that we've lost Lakeside and we've lost Bob Potter because I love Bob a bit and it, Lakeside was special. It was special. And just finally, touching on your experiences at the O2, I think it's more a, a shiny, modern venue for darts and it might attract a different sort of crowd that Lakeside but, uh, Look, it, it, it's logical and what the BDO have done, you can't knock it. You're going into London, you're going to get a lot more people coming, they're going to catch trains, they're going to get there and do what they're doing. It's more accessible than what Lakeside was, we know that, we understand that. But Lakeside was an entity of its own. It was a massive, massive, massive place, it really was. But times change. I really hope that going forward that the Indigo can be a big step forward for the BDO. And hopefully I can be part of that. I'm trying and I'll keep trying, you know, and hopefully I can be there one day again just to play there as well. But I really do appreciate everything the BDO are trying to do. We know it's hard work. We know that everybody background, what they try to do, it's hard work to try and get sponsors and TV. But hopefully if we can go to the Indigo and make it work and go forward, 
then maybe the BDO can grow and a lot more things could happen for the BDO. Thank you very much, Craig. Great to have you back. Thanks very much.